Hello friends, Pete the Drummer here, and in this video, I am going to rebuild my PVC snare drum. Keep watching. Okay, uh, that's right friends. Yep, in this video, I'm going to rebuild my PVC snare drum. Now, those of you with a keen eye will see that uh, I have already modified this PVC snare drum shell. I cut it down on a table saw which I did film, but I filmed it previously because I wasn't quite sure how it was going to turn out. But anyway, let's back up for a second. If you've been watching my channel for a while, perhaps you're new here since seeing the original build video of my PVC snare drum. After that, I put up an update video about a month ago proclaiming that because of problems that you'll uh, learn about in the update video, I had pretty much given up on this PVC snare drum. But a lot of you guys uh, commented and made some really great suggestions on how to fix it. The best suggestion, and the one that I'm going with, is to make it into a free-floating snare drum. So, after weighing all the options and considering all of those suggestions, making this a free-floating drum, to me, seems like the only logical choice. So I went on eBay and found a used free-floating snare frame, rather. This one happens to be the old style with the bridge strainers. And we'll talk more about those as we get to that part. But what I decided to do, as you'll see in the, in the video clip, I cut down the shell so that when it fits in the frame, the total depth of the drum is about five and a half inches, including the inch and a quarter of the aluminum frame. But I decided to cut it down because A, the five and a half inch total depth will be a little bit easier for me to set up the way I'm comfortable behind my drum set. And B, hopefully a shallower depth of the PVC shell wall will hopefully increase its integrity and if there was any flex under tension hopefully it won't flex as much now this is a whole lot of guesswork here but um as you can see in the clip uh i cut this down on a table saw i got it pretty pretty square um so all i really have to do at this point is just i want to sand down this bottom edge and make make the bottom edge smooth i don't have to put a bevel on it or anything um, it fits, surprisingly, it fits perfectly in the frame, and the frame, as you can see, has a felt strip inside the, uh, the channel where an otherwise plywood shell would, would sit, so that uh, felt strip kind of seals the PVC shell in place, so all I have to do is just smooth out this bottom, you can see the shadows there. I'm going to smooth out this bottom edge from the rough cut of the table saw and then I'm going to sand off uh, the stripes and fill in all the holes with some putty and basically that's it. This drum will be ready to go in no time. So thanks for tuning in. Keep watching. Let's see how this turns out. Okay guys, so uh, uh, I spent some time uh, stripping off all of the uh, adhesive and the chrome stripes uh, that took a little that took a little bit of work uh, I had to use some acetone to get the stripe adhesive off the stripes themselves came off just fine I was just able to peel them off um, but it left the uh, the adhesive was left behind and it was it was on there pretty good so um, I used, like I said, I used some acetone and some elbow grease and finally got the, uh, the stripes off. Um, so now, after I cut the shell down on the table saw, uh, I measured it and the whole shell is square except for this section right here. From, from here to about here is just one thirty-second of an inch higher than the rest of the shell. So I'm going to take some 100 grit sandpaper, I'm going to sand this section down first, and then I'll smooth out the whole bottom of the shell. Mm -hmm. 
Alright guys, so sanding is complete uh, and I got the bottom edge uh, nice and smooth, but I have all of these holes that I have to deal with now uh, from where I used to have lugs. And for that, as I mentioned, I may have mentioned at the top of the video, I'm going to use this stuff. It's called uh, quick steel and it's basically the same as wood filler. Uh, it's a two part putty that I'll mix in my hands. Uh, to activate it and uh, but I'm going to use this because right here you can see designed to repair PVC that's important step number one and number two it can be sanded I don't know what color this is going to be so that'll be a surprise caution eye irritant anyway here we go so far it looks like it's gray so you just basically uh, take a chunk off the end here and you mix it together with your fingers and you gotta mix it. You gotta knead it really, really well. Now it looks like it's gonna be black. I don't, I'm gonna make a mess no matter what I do, so. Okay guys, so I've got all the holes uh, filled up with the epoxy now, and as you can see, it's a total mess, but that's okay, because now I have to wait for the epoxy to cure, uh, and then I can go back and sand it all smooth. Hopefully, that'll be the end of it, but I'm anticipating that around like the edges of each of the holes, there might be some little gaps and voids that I might have to uh, go back over and fill in with some more epoxy. Uh, and that's fine. Uh, I only used about half of the tube and frankly a lot of that was wasted on my hands and uh, also this stuff hardens a lot quicker than um, uh, wood filler does. Uh, it smells terrible as well and it gets kind of hot, which is a little bit weird. I'm gonna go wash. See you in the next segment. Okay guys, so sanding is done. I sanded it down, you're not gonna see that. I sanded it down to 400 grit, nice and smooth. The reason I'm sanding it down so smoothly is because I'm going to wrap it. But I am not going to be using traditional drum wrap. In fact, I'm going to be using something quite different. Uh, this, this does not look as purple on camera as it is in real life. But this is a very thin sheet of chromed vinyl purple color. And um, this is actually used to wrap cars. So the reason I wanted to get this really smooth is because any wrap that's a chrome mirror finish, any little imperfection on the surface of what you're wrapping is gonna show up like a pimple right in the middle of your forehead. So this needs to be super, super smooth and clean before I put this on. The good news is if this doesn't end up looking good, I can simply peel it right off. And in that case, I will switch to a purple sparkle, which is not reflective. It's glossy, but it's not reflective. So it won't pick up any imperfections that might be left on the outer wall of the drum. And if the purple sparkle doesn't look good, I have more of this silver sparkle. I actually have already wrapped uh, two whole drum sets in this silver gray sparkle and even though this stuff is like really really super thin, you can see how thin it is, uh, it does have a curing time. Once you apply it you're supposed to let it sit for I think like 
12 hours or so. And once it's cured, it is surprisingly strong. I don't know that it'll have the lifespan or longevity as a traditional drum wrap, but you don't need to use glue because it's all adhesive backed. And, you know, if you don't like it, you can just peel it right off and try a different color, which is what I'm planning on doing if the purple chrome uh, doesn't look good. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and apply it and let's see how we do. All right, guys, so here you go. Here's the drum uh, mocked up with the chrome wrap. Uh, you know, I think it looks all right. I don't know if I'll keep it. I might uh, swap it out for the uh, sparkle. Actually, that on camera, that actually looks pretty good. Huh. But for now, we have to move on to the next problem. Okay, and the next problem are these bottom lugs, bottom uh, tension rods. You can see that is not a whole lot of space for a tension rod. And what happened was I mistakenly uh, measured it incorrectly, assuming that a one inch tension rod would be long enough and it turns out I probably need like an inch and a quarter. So it's not the end of the world. These were only 39 cents each. I think maybe even cheaper than that from Drum Factory Direct. I'm sure you've ordered there from there before. But I don't want to have to order another 10 of these. So I am going to once again break out my trusty Dremel tool with cutting wheels and I'm gonna measure and cut down a tension rod and see if that'll work. See if I can get the end of the threads clean enough to, uh, you know, basically make my own custom length tension rods. truth. It works. Nine more to go. And of course for doing that I will be wearing eye protection. I suggest if you're going to do something like this yourself you should do the same. Okay, so now I realize that that is a whole lot of work to go through uh, just to save four dollars. But um, frankly, uh, this doing this kind of stuff is fun for me, and uh, you know you can't put a price on fun. Although maybe you can, because this whole build is really starting to cost me a lot of money. <laughs> okay, so I am almost ready to uh, actually put this drum together. However, there's one more thing I need to do, and that is I need to cut the top of these this uh, snare rim. And the reason is because, um, if you remember from the top of the video, this is the old style frame, and the, the old style used strainers that are called, I believe they're called bridge strainers and they use a different type of snare wire which I'll show you when I put it together and they use a different type of snare strainer where the strap comes over this bar here and essentially the snare wires will overhang the bottom uh, bearing edge of the drum 
and that's by design. The thing is, the snare rims, snare side rims that came on the old style, uh, had they were extended. This section was extended. Uh, maybe I'll find a pick and insert a picture of it. Um, but I don't have those rims, so I'm just going to cut off with my Dremel again. Just going to cut off uh, this section of the snare rim and file it down, and then uh, we can put this thing together. Destroy everything. Destroy everything. All right, well, uh, at this point, uh, I think it's time to actually put this drum together. Um, now, when I bought this frame on eBay, uh, it did have the, uh, the strainers on it. But as you can see from this one, this bottom uh, bridge here is kind of bent up like that. And on this one, it was even worse. And when I tried to bend it back, um, it just it snapped off and broke. Fortunately, Drum Factory Direct sells replacements. All right, guys, so as you can see, the snare wires hang over the edge of the bottom the bottom bearing edge and as you can see the tolerances are really really tight but both ends have uh, tension screws so I can fine-tune it uh, later on All right, guys, so here is the first build. I have an Evans 300 on the bottom. I have an old Evans EC reverse dot on the top. I've got triple flange hoops. And the tuning is relatively high. I hope you can hear this. And with the bottom head about a fourth above. Here we go with no muffling whatsoever. All right, so honestly, uh, I'm not all that impressed yet. A couple of things I think are going on here that I think I can change and maybe improve the sound a little bit. Uh, first, uh, the top head is old, so I have a new head for the top. Second, uh, the thing that I'm noticing most is uh, this snare is awfully snappy. It's awfully crisp. And I'm wondering if that has to do with the snares and the way uh, the snares hang over the edge like that. So just for fun, I'm going to switch over to a regular snare set. Uh, I've got a, a Pure Sound uh, Custom Pro. And then last, the last thing I'm going to try is a die cast hoop on the, uh, on the top head. All right, guys. New head is on, and the head that I chose is an Evans ST coated. So here's the tuning with the new head on. We'll have the pure sound wires with the strap going over the strainer bridge, and I will first play without any muffling and then with the donuts.
So let's try with a donut. Here we go. All right, well, so far, uh, I definitely like uh, this combination of going back to a regular snare wire and the new head. Uh, that definitely made a big improvement. And now with uh, the diecast top hoop, first without any muffling. Now with the donut. All right, final thoughts. Well, I, uh, I do think it definitely sounds better uh, as a free-floating snare than it did as a traditional snare with the lugs bolted on, but I still think, in my opinion, it sounds best when it's tuned down way low with the donuts or other means of dampening for that 70s fat backbeat sound. When it's tuned up high, it just doesn't have the body of a wood drum, or for that matter, it doesn't have the gritty bark of, uh, of a metal shelf drum. It doesn't sound bad, but it's different. Uh, it's unique. Unfortunately for me, for the way I play, for the kind of music that my, my band plays, it just doesn't work. So I will be putting this drum on the shelf. Not a total loss though, because now I have a free floating frame. So I'll be looking forward to, in the future, uh, getting an assortment of uh, free-floating shells made of different materials, wood, acrylic, metal. But yeah, as far as a PVC drum shell goes, like I said in the second video of this now series, uh, if PVC made for good drum material, every drum manufacturer would have a PVC variant of the drum sets that they make. So this one's going on the shelf for now. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell icon if you haven't already. Uh, coming up next in my drum related uh, videos, I am going to once again uh, sort of rebuild and upgrade my uh, old Tama Iron Cobra double bass drum pedal. Uh, after that, I'm doing a proper build on my Maple Walnut Stave drum shell. I'm going to take this finish off, uh, I'm going to get some bearing edges cut for it, and I'm going to turn this from an 8 lug to a 10 lug. Spring is right around the corner, so sooner, sooner than later I'll be back at uh, hiking and exploring and urban exploration videos as well. Thank you again for watching, I hope you found this series of PVC snare drum videos helpful and informative, especially if you're looking to make your own PVC snare drum. Uh, that's it for this one. Thanks again. Like, share, subscribe. See you in the next video.